Hello and thanks for watching Gary Teaches Maths. I'm continuing to go through the Edexcel 2019 High ATM Maths paper and this is paper two. We're on the final question which is question 20 and this is a question about vectors. So we're given this shape CDEF and we're given parts of the, uh, the lines that make it up in terms of A's and B's. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put them onto our diagram so we can see CD is A, we've got DE is B, and we've got FC is A minus B. And the arrows are very important here um, because if we went in the opposite direction, if we went D to C, we'd actually be doing minus whatever the vector was. So DC is actually minus A. So the first part is we've got to express FE in terms of a and or B and currently although this is our line FE we don't know what it is to go straight across but we can take any other path that we do know so we know that to get from F to E we could take an alternative route which would be to go FC plus CD and then plus DE and because we do know what they are we know a, uh, FC is A minus B we know that CD is A and we know that DE is just B and if we tidy that up we can see that the B's will cancel minus B and plus B and that will just give us 2A so we've completed that part and now we're looking at part B and this is a bit more difficult. So we're told that M is the midpoint of the line DE. So that means it splits it in the ratio one to one. We're also told that X is a point on FM such that FX to XM is in the ratio N to one. So that means that this is n and this is 1 splitting that ratio and we're also told that cxe is a straight line so that means the line that goes from c to e will actually pass through x because it's a straight line and we've got to work out the value of n that would make that true so if n wasn't was a different value x might be somewhere like here and it obviously wouldn't be a straight line It'd be two lines with a join in the middle. So here, with that particular value of n, we're going to go straight through x, and that's the value we've got to find. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the whole of the line, CE, and we're going to try and find what that is. So CE is can actually be found by CD and then plus DE. And that's fairly straightforward because we know that CD is A and we know that DE is B. So that's that one, CE. And we're now going to look at the part of that line, which is XE. And the reason for that is if CXE is a straight line, then XE will be in the same direction as CE. So XE will be in the same direction as CE if uh, CXE is a straight line. Now, as a consequence of that, that means that the coefficients in front of the A and the B will be in the same ratio. So currently, the, uh, the coefficients in front of the A and B are both 1, because it's a 1A and it's a 1B. So they're equal. And that means if Xe is 
parallel to CE, so for XE, this line here from X to E, is parallel to CE, then its coefficients must also be equal. So the coefficients of A and B must also be equal for it to be parallel to CE. So I'm going to say, um, so um, XE will be in the same direction as CE if CXE is a straight line. So the coefficients, and that means the numbers in front of the A is, A's and B's, the coefficients um, of A and B will also be equal. Okay, so um, I'm now going to try and find an expression for XE. So starting up here again, so XE, I can see is going to be any path I can take from X to E. So I'm going to say, well, XE is going to be XM plus ME. Now we do know what ME is because ME is half of DE. So I'm just going to write down that ME equals half of DE. And since DE was B, then ME is half of B. So I'm now going to try and find out what is XM. Well, XM is a fraction of the line FM. And we can see the fraction actually is 1 out of the full, full length, which is n plus 1. So xm is 1 out of n plus 1 multiplied by fm, so the full distance across fm. So now what I need to do is find fm. So fm, I can take any path that I want. Um, so I'm going to take a path I know. So fm is the fc, which is a minus B uh, plus the A and then uh, plus half of the DM. So in other, in other words, it's plus half of B. And if I tidy that up, I'm going to get that that's equal to 2A and then minus half B. So I can now put that back into what I've got for my FM there. And I can see that that would mean that XM is equal to 1 over the N plus 1 times by 2A minus half of B. Okay, so I'm going to put my values for XM and ME into my expression for XE. So I've got that XE then is equal to the 1 over N plus 1 times by 2A minus half B and then plus a half B. Now what I'm going to do is multiply these out, the brackets out, and then try and combine the A's and B's part. So I'll get the, get the coefficient of A separate and the coefficient of B separate in other words. So I've got uh, the 1 over N plus 1 times the 2A will actually give me 2 over N plus 1 times the A. That's an N there. So my coefficient for the A there is 2 over N plus 1. So now what I've got to do is multiply the 1 over N plus 1 by the minus a half there. So that's going to give me minus 1 over 2 N plus 1 times the B, and then 
plus the half B that I had already. So I've got my A coefficient sorted out, 2 over M plus 1 times by the A. And I'm going to tidy up this. Now, what I can do is I can try and uh, alter the order, first of all. So I'm just going to hope I don't run out of space. I'm going to say it's half and then minus the 1 over 2n plus 1 with a bracket there. And that's times my b. So that bit in brackets is my coefficient for my b. I'm just going to write that out again and tidy that up. I can see that what I would have to do, I'm just write down, down the a bit first, n plus 1 times by the a. Uh, I need to make the, co the denominator the same in both of these. And I would have to multiply top and bottom of the half by n plus 1. So I'll get n plus 1. When I times 1 by n plus 1, I get n plus 1. Minus the 1 on the other one, and I can put it all over 2n plus 1, and that's times by b. So I know this is a long question. Um, I'm just trying to go through all this very slowly so that it's easy to follow what I've done. So we've got the 2 over n plus 1 for the a. I'm just going to tidy up the top line of this. Now the ones will cancel. So plus 1 and minus 1 cancel each other out. And I end up with just plus n over 2 n plus 1 times the b. Now we've now got the uh, coefficients of a and b nice and neat. Um, but we said before that if CX is a straight line, then the coefficients of A and B will be equal. So the coefficient for A here is 2 over N plus 1. The coefficient for B is N over 2 N plus 1, and they must be equal. So that's going to tell me that we've got 2 over N plus 1. It's going to be equal N over 2n plus 1. Now, because I've got an n plus 1 on both sides, first thing I can do is if I multiply both sides by n plus 1, which I can do because it's an equation, times that one by n plus 1 as well, then the n plus 1s will cancel and I'll be left with 2 equals n over 2. And we're at the very final stage now, and we can say, well, we just need to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So times 2 and times 2. So the 2s cancel there. And I'm left with that n is equal to 4. And we've completed it. So that was a very difficult question, as they are on the final question on these papers. Um, so I hope that was helpful to you. And if it was, please like our video and subscribe to our channel, which is Gary Teaches Maths. And for more help, visit our website, which is bestmathstutors.co.uk. Thanks for watching.